I'm Ashlyn. And I'm Zach. And we're traveling A to Z. This week, we're in Egypt. For the last few days, we've been doing a river cruise. Last night, we got to Luxor and explored the Luxor Temple. Today, we're heading to the West Bank. So we're on a boat. Getting ready to go to the West Bank to go on a hot air balloon ride. And it's about 4.30 in the morning right now. It's really early. It's really early. It is amazing how quiet it is while you're flying. Everywhere. It's sunrise. Us in the wall. <laughs> We're supposed to sit back and hold on and. Oh, there's the wall. Okay, we're gonna pass the wall. <laughs> oh, we still have a while. <laughs> Yay, that was fun! So we just finished a sunrise hot air balloon ride. This is our third hot air balloon ride. We did uh, one in France, one in California, and now one in the desert in Egypt. And it's cool. It was a very different experience because you had the, uh, the ruins that you flew over. And then you also got to see some of the um, desert and the desert mountains. So pretty neat, a really cool experience. So when you're in Egypt on the West Bank, I recommend doing it. Our next stop is to the Valley of the Queens. The Valley of the Queens lies southwest of the Valley of the Kings and holds the tombs of many royal wives and children. The pharaohs themselves were buried in the Valley of the Kings. The main area contains 91 tombs and another 19 tombs in the valley. The three tombs that are available for us to see were Nefertari's tomb, the Prince of Amun, and Queen Titi's tomb. Our first stop in the Valley of Queens is to the tomb of Nefertari. Nefertari was the first queen and the most beloved wife of Rasmussen II. She has one of the most beautiful tombs in the Valley of the Kings and Queens and also was honored by Rasmussen II by a temple that was built in Abu Sabal, which you can see in one of our previous videos. The tomb of Queen Nefertari is one of the largest in the Valley of the Queens. It is 520 square meters and is covered with colorful paintings of Queen Nefertari. She had a sarcophagus that sat in the middle of the chamber, but tomb raiders stole all the buried treasure along with her sarcophagus. 
So we're going to tune. It's the best one. Here we are. It's Queen Nefertari's. That's original. The walls of the tomb have very brilliantly colored pictures of Nefertari. They show her position in the eyes of her husband and how beloved she was. There are also chapters of the Book of the Dead, which are supposed to guide her to transform into a bird in the afterlife. The tomb, since being discovered in 1904, has been opened and closed multiple times to the public. To help prevent further damage of this tomb, the number of visitors is limited, therefore you have to purchase a ticket prior. If you do come to the Valley of the Queens, I definitely recommend purchasing the extra ticket. It is expensive, but it is one of the most preserved tombs that we saw in all of Egypt. It was definitely worth the entrance ticket to come into this tomb for us. By far, the best preserved tomb we've been in. This is incredible. And the colors are just amazing. So this is the tomb of Nefertari, and it's beautiful. We just finished. It's amazing. It's by far the best tomb, most preserved we've seen. This is impressive. So I guess the Valley of the Queen, uh, most of the tombs are not preserved. Uh, this was the best preserved one um, left. They also found a lot of buried babies here. We're now going into the tomb of Queen Titis. Queen Titi was an ancient Egyptian queen of the 20th dynasty, a wife and sister of Ramesses III and possibly the mother of Ramesses IV. The wall of the tomb has decorations in low relief. The painted colors remain in exceptional condition and is very elegant. The tomb follows a straight axis with descending entrance corridor leading to the first main hall and vestibule. It is the little room. That design's on the ceiling again. Our next stop is to visit the tomb of Prince Amen. The tomb of Prince Amen is very well preserved. He was the son of Ramses III. This tomb was the highlight of the Valley of the Queens until the reopening of the Nefertari's tomb. Amun would have succeeded his father as a pharaoh, but he died when he was a child and was buried in the royal tomb. From the entrance, steps lead down to the tomb hall, which contained beautifully bright colored wall paintings. You could see here Amun is easily recognizable because he is wearing the characteristic braided hairstyle of the prince. The sarcophagus. That's a granite from Ashwan, which is like 300 miles away. That's a big sarcophagus, too, for a little baby. Our next stop is to Deir al Bahri, which is an Egyptian archaeological site in the necropolis of Thebes. It is made up of the bay and the cliffs of the west bank of the Nile River, east of the Valley of the Kings. This is the temple for Queen Hatshepsu. We're going to get on this little Egyptian train and they're going to take us to the base of Hatshepsut's temple. The temple of Hatshepsut at Deir al Bahir is one of the most distinctive temples in Egypt. It was built out of limestone, not sandstone, like most of the other funeral temples in the New Kingdom period. The temple was built to commemorate the achievements of the great Queen Hatshepsut and as a funeral temple for her. The temple describes the conflict between Hatshepsut and her nephew and son-in-law, Tutmos III. Hatshepsut was married to her half-brother, Tutmos II. When he died, her stepson, Tutmos III, inherited the throne, but he was only two years of age. Hatshepsut assumed the position of a pharaoh and adopted the full royalty, making her a co-ruler alongside Tutmos III. In order to establish herself in the Egyptian patriarchy, she took on traditional male roles and was depicted as a male pharaoh. Hatshepsut was considered one of the most successful pharaohs. She was one of the most prolific builders in ancient Egypt 
and oversaw large-scale construction projects. Another thing she was known for was for re-establishing trade networks that were disrupted. She visited the land of Punt where there was trading being done and she brought back 31 live trees. You could see some of the roots of one of the trees still. Hatshepsut reigned for 22 years before she died. Tutmis III and his son, Amanamhop II, attempted to remove her from office in multiple accounts. You could see her statues were destroyed and her monuments were defaced and other achievements were ascribed to other pharaohs. Apparently that right there is Queen Habitsut. She is the only queen that's in this position. Um, all the other queens were dressed differently. And that position means what all the kings did. So she was pretending almost to be a king, and she's the only queen that also has a shrine in the Valley of the Kings. At this site, there's a temple for Queen Hatshepsut, a temple for Thotmes III, as well the ruins of the 7th century monastery. Several hundred years later, the area was used as a private cemetery. The chapel was considered one of the most important areas of the whole temple. Anubis Chapel sits on the north end of the second floor. They have some nice pictures of Hatshepsut and the gods. Almost every single picture of Hatshepsut was chiseled off the wall to try to get rid of her from existence. Walking through the central corridor, you end up going through an open courtyard and then into the sanctuary. This is the inner courtyard of Hatshepsut's temple before you get to the sanctuary. This is the sanctuary of Amun. The sanctuary was cut into the actual rock. The sanctuary is made so it lined up with Hatshepsut's tomb in the Valley of the Kings. Join us for our next video as we head to the Valley of the Kings.